On March 17, 2022, literally a week after my birthday, on March 10th, I almost lost my life. In my head, I still can't believe this accident happened because literally a day before this accident happened, I was having one of the greatest times of my life with some friends. It was such a fun day and never would I expect it the next day that I would almost lose my life. But let me begin with how my day went before the accident. It was just a normal day waking up for school, getting ready for school, and uh, I had a YouTube video planned later that day. So I wore my favorite hoodie, my favorite shirt, so I looked good for the YouTube video. And um, at around 10 o'clock, I just went along with my day and went to school. And when I went to school, it was just a regular day of school, just meeting with friends, talking with friends, going to class, and doing homework. And I'd say around 2.50 p.m. is when school ends for me. And at around this time, I would just walk to my car and uh, just drive home. But before I drove off from my school, I texted all my friends that I planned on recording YouTube videos with later that day that I would see them in about 30 minutes. After I sent that text, I just went on my way and drove. I thought it was gonna be another regular day driving out of school, but never would I expect that, that and three minutes into my driving route, literally in a blink of an eye, I woke up on the sidewalk, paramedics surrounding me, a bunch of people surrounding me. I don't know what happened, but the first thing I would always remember is that when I woke up, it didn't feel real. It felt like I was in a dream, but soon I noticed that I was in a car accident. When I woke up, when I opened my eyes, the other thing I noticed was only one eye was open. Only my right eye was open at the time. And uh, the first thing I did was touch my left eye because for some reason I couldn't see from that eye. I didn't know if it was just not open or if I lost eye vision from that eye. The next thing I did was I looked around me. But when I was looking around, it was kind of like blurry. Um, it felt really slow. I felt really dizzy. So I kind of didn't know what was going on until I saw two cars, which is my car and uh, another car, which were badly damaged. And that's when I came to the conclusion that I was just in a car accident. It didn't feel real. It felt like a dream because I literally couldn't feel anything. I could barely move my body. I didn't feel no pain. I only remember barely moving, being able to move my head. How I felt at the time wasn't really scared because it, it did not feel real at all until I started to realize it was real when I could start f feeling the motion and hearing them picking me up and putting me into the paramedic truck. It was definitely a scary feeling because <laughs> when I was in that paramedic truck, I couldn't move my body at the time. I, I started hearing the sirens and being drove off. And I re started realizing that this was real because it was going on for way too long but the one thing I still didn't notice is that I had a really big cut on my head. I thought I couldn't move my body anymore because I really couldn't. But going back to the part when I was in the paramedics car, I couldn't really open my eyes at this time uh, because it was blurry. So I kind of had to rely on my hearing to, to determine where I was at. And I can remember them driving to the hospital with the sirens. And I'm not going to lie. Every time I hear the sirens, <laughs> the past few days, just outside, I just think about what happened. It's kind of like, after this accident, it's like a... <sighs> it's kind of like a mental battle the past few days because there's so many things that... <sighs> that just make you rethink of what happened. Like being in a car again doesn't feel the same. Uh, when I heard them arrive to the hospital, all I heard them was me being rushed to a room. All I can hear like here is a lot of people working on me. And keep in mind, I still didn't know that there's a big cut on my head until I started hearing them talk about how much blood was coming out of my head. Just hearing them talk about how much, <laughs> how much blood was coming out of my head. It's kind of scary to think about it. Because that's all I heard. All I heard was them talking about the blood. I was hoping it was fake because I still didn't feel anything. I still wasn't able to move my body. My eyes were just closed. I was just hearing everything that was going on in that room. 
And when I started feeling that neck brace put on me, I don't know how to explain how it felt. I was just scared because I wasn't able to move my body at the time. And when they put a neck brace on you, that's one thing that goes, goes on to your head that, I don't know how to, I can't talk right now. When they put that neck brace on me, the one thing that was in my head was, <laughs> am I okay? Can I move my neck? And I, I just started to understand that more that this car accident really happened because it was too detailed. And the one thing that, that hurt me the most when that neck brace was put on and realizing that this was real was, was just thinking about my parents. Be because every time I drive off to school, my parents always tell me to drive safe. And specifically, the morning of this day, my mom told me to drive safe. <laughs> I would always tell her I would. But when I realized that this was real, it just hurt me because I didn't keep that promise to my mom. But going back to the, when I was in the hospital bed, after they worked on my head, they covered my head with really tight to stop the bleeding. And after that, they were doing this thing called, I think called a CT scan. It was like an x-ray throughout my whole body. And I think they were just doing that to see if I broke any bones. After that, they, uh, they brought me to another room. This is where I was able to open my eyes and see clearly. The first thing I did when I started realizing this was real was I just started to move my body, my, my legs, arms, fingers, seeing what was working. And um, I thank God that I was able to move my, my arms, my legs, my feet. I just felt a really tight sensation on my head. I just know, I think I just knew it was the bandaid around my head, but I didn't really know what was going on up there. I asked my doctor what happened and the doctor explained that I had a six inch cut on my head. It was kind of a bit open at the time, but they stitched it. And when my doctor was explaining that to me, I was just really grateful to be there. Um, I could have bled out in minutes. And I also asked my doctor why I couldn't open my left eye. I thought I lost it earlier. And she told me that I couldn't open that eye because there was so much blood coming up on the left side of my head that it covered it. If you really wanna see what my cut looks like, I posted a picture of it on my Instagram. I don't wanna put the picture here on my YouTube video because it might be disturbing to some people. And now I'm gonna talk about probably the most painful part of this whole situation that hurt me the most. It was not no surgery, none of that. It was basically the moment I saw my parents come into the room. First, I just heard the, op the door open. I heard the door open many times since the doctor's moving in and out. But this time, I just heard my, my, uh, my parents' voices. I heard my parents' voices. And um, when I heard them, I just cried because I didn't know what to say. I was just happy to see them. But what hurts me is wondering how they felt seeing me. And all I just said to them is I'm sorry because they definitely felt more pain to see me like that than what I felt in that situation. That moment was definitely the hardest time out of the whole situation that happened to me. After that, I posted a picture of what happened to me and um, I appreciate all the kind messages, um, all the prayers. But after posting that Instagram story, I just remembered uh, the people I was supposed to meet up with. And when I checked my notifications, I just saw them spamming me with countless messages of where I was at. I was supposed to meet up with them at 3.30 p.m. But at the time I checked my phone, I think it was like five or six. And after I made a few phone calls, the doctors came in and gave me my full x-ray results. And they told me that the only bone that is broken in my body is something called a sternum, something in here close to my heart area. The bone pain is not that bad. It affects my breathing sometimes. I could feel pain. They also pretty much told me that I had no blood in the brain because there's so many things that would have went on with this cut on my head. It could have caused brain damage to me. And in the end, this situation has made me mentally stronger um, because it's all been a mental battle since the accident happened. I still have that goal to hit 1 million subs. This is definitely gonna make me push even more because literally in a blink of an eye, I almost lost my life. Even though I'm still really confused why this happened to me, I will always remember that God kept me here. God still has a plan for me. 
and my legacy continues on.